Louisville, Kentucky. Sorry, a little bit late. We had an Easter rush at the grocery store. Got out of there late. How's everybody going? How do you do this now? Holy cow, Batman! What? Gonna be a barn burner today. Take off my black gloves. That's what was for that, the Batman thing. You gonna say your buddy's been? Holy cow, Batman. Give me your gloves. You want them. Finally. Sticker Kid is here and Sticker Granddaughter. Before we start, I'm gonna tell him something. All right, go, the floor is yours. I don't have any jokes. No jokes? No, as right. usual. As usual. All right. An interesting story that happened to me in the last week. KRWD said hi, Frank and grandkids, and Nova's Nick said barn burner Frank. All right, barn burner. Got to get my white gloves back on so Vinyl Rich is happy. He calls me the white gloves man. So there was an auction on eBay last week with 20 classic rock albums, all original pressings. And I got my buddy Kevin from Kevin Records here in Louisville. He was he uh, bid 33% of the bid and I bid two thirds. And I got to pick out the best five out of the 20 and he got the other 15. So this is what I picked out. I got a Wheels on Fire cream that has a hype sticker for White Room on the uh, silver cover. I thought that was pretty cool. Never seen that hype sticker before. Got a Fleetwood Mac Rumors first press in the shrink with the original insert. One of the, probably the, one of the top three albums in sales of all time. But I got number one coming up here. I got this, picked out this Boston album, their first album with two hype stickers on the shrink, original pressing. And the last one I picked out, of course, was Dark Side of the Moon. Original first pressing from the United States, 1973. And it's got the both posters and both stickers in there. David Gilmore, the man that came to Hamilton, Ohio once. And the other poster, Pink Floyd from Dark Side of the Moon. But the real key of the auction, I took a chance on the Led Zeppelin II they showed in the pictures. They didn't show records on any of these, they just said they were in very good to excellent condition. Let's put these away. So the Led Zeppelin II that was in the auction was this one. It had the right cover, had the right number, 8236. But I couldn't see the record in the listing. They didn't show the records. And my lucky day had the original 1969 inner sleeve. And it's got the RL hot mix from Peep from Presswell. Side one. Side two, it's in very good plus condition. But my buddy Kevin from Kevin Records, he, he got online and bought another lot of records and he got them in today. And wouldn't you know, we were two for two. He also got an RL Presswell hot mix. The right matte cover. Gatefold cover. Mine's in a little better shape. Mine doesn't have any edge wear at all. 
And he's got, haven't cleaned it yet, but it's a same pressing. Has RL on side one and RL SS on side two. So that's pretty amazing. We took two chances on online auctions and we both ended up with RL Led Zeppelin II hot mixes. I don't think we could ever do that again. Alright, this is Kevin's record and this is mine. I got the gold record for one. Do the one. Any questions? KRWD said it's amazing how many pressings of Dark Side of Moon there are. There are a lot. Wasn't there somebody just said I thought on a live stream the other day there's a hundred and some pressings of, of Dark Side of the Moon. I think that has more pressings than any other album in the history of rock music. Do the next Novus next one. Um, that was next at KRWD there, still pressing and may never stop. On, the, on Dark Side of the Moon? Yeah. Can you put that over there? Yeah, I have a question. Yes, yeah, what's your question? Are you going to do like a little quiz? You mean a trivia? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Okay. I gotta come up with one. I will. I always do. On Easter? I don't have an Easter. You want to come up with an Easter quiz? No. Hmm. And you want an Easter egg hunt? Maybe. Maybe. Doing that tomorrow. How about butchers everywhere and they have to find them? Well, that's what my story is now. On two butcher covers that were on online on eBay last week and neither seller knew they had a butcher cover. And I got them both. Do them two comments real quick before you start on the butcher cover with this. No. UWU said, I have a few promo slip covers that you can put all three CD anthologies into and it makes the set. Also, I have Let It Be album cover slip that looks like the Get Back album cover yeah, on I've the I've seen that before. And then do the last one about the sticker kit. KRWD said, looks like sticker kit is ready for baseball with the gloves. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> sticker kit, are you ready for baseball? Oh, and started this week. So this is the from uh, New Hampshire. Goodwill was turned in. And they put it on eBay online. It started off at a $10 bid. And there ended up being about 48 bids, and I went up for $998. Uh, East Coast, Scranton, you can see, barely see Ringo's V-neck. That's probably why at Goodwill, they didn't realize they had a butcher cover because it's kind of hard to see. But it's real. And then, two days later, somebody put up a stereo yesterday and today, and they had it at $7.99 starting bid or best offer. I think I told the story last time. I offered $1,400 and then I messaged to him, what's your best counter offer so I can buy this now tonight? And he, um, he asked me what my best offer was and I said $1,600. At the same second, he sent me a $1,500 uh, counter offer and I paid right away. But it's really obvious here. How he missed not seeing Ringo's head, his V-neck, his pant legs. That's the most obvious uh, second state butcher cover I've ever seen. That should be a real good peel because it's on there really a thin slick. You can tell the top slick will come off real easy when I begin the peel. KRWD said, wow, worth every penny. You can see the, you can see me. You can see what? The so meat? Seeing that you, saying that she could, or they could see it and they said yeah. meat. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty obvious. You can even see Ring, or, uh, John Lennon's head in the butcher cover right over there in that opening there by uh, the trunk slip. John Lennon's head's right there. Do the dandy one because I... We need that Caesar. off the wall. Caesar says, hey, Frank and family and everyone. Hi. Hi, Caesar. We got your albums out uh, yesterday. 
And They're then, on the way. Daniel Castillo said no one could see Ringo, so I could see how he missed it. On the other one? Nice one. Yeah, the other one's hard to see. But this one, look at the difference. Big difference. How transparent this one is compared to that. They're both East Coast Scranton. This is a stereo, which is um, eight times rarer than this mono. So if I get a nice peel out of this, it's worth uh, at least four thousand dollars. Montgomery Raymond said, "Looks fantastic. When will you peel them?" Uh, in the next week. So you see uh, Ringo's V-neck right there. You can see his head. You can see his pant legs. This is the um, one of the first 150 uh, uh, textured slicks they made in the early 1990s that uh, is about as close as you can to having a first state butcher cover. Any questions about butcher covers before I go on to something else? Did you answer about when you're peeling the butcher cover? In the next week. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah, you said that, Ma. Caesar just said thanks. I'll let you know when they arrive. All right. All right. All right. Sicker kids got a question. Why is it famous? Why is the butcher cover famous? Yes. Um, because it was banned before two hours after it was released. That's you want to get that down funny. again since he gave me that question. Well, I'm so sorry. Uh -huh. All right, sticker kid, can you see why it got banned so quick? Mm. It's got baby dolls. It's got, see the baby teeth, uh, the doll's teeth on the floor? Yeah. This one was airbrushed. They got all the blood off the smocks, and that one... Is how it was before they airbrushed to make it a little more decent. But it was it was only in a Sears um, in a few stores out in L.A. for a couple hours, and the Capitol representatives went in there and they took them all back to the uh, factory. They took everything, everyone they could find. They pulled them all. They pulled all the posters. They pulled everything. Oh. I have an original poster that Perry Cox gave me a COA for that's in my uh, bank vault, but this is a reproduction from the early 70s of the, um, they made like 700,000 posters of these, but they were all supposed to be destroyed in a couple of record stores and a couple of radio DJs. Kept them and put them away and never sent them back. So the real one that I have for sale is up for sale at thirteen hundred dollars. Does that answer your question, Sticker Kid? No. I mean, you don't see why they would ban something like that. No. You're just goofy. No. That was way ahead of its time. Hold on, read that one. KRWD said, Frank, did the Beatles ever say what they thought about them banning the cover? Their opinion on the... Um, they didn't care. They wanted it released. John Lennon said uh, that, that Alan Livingston, the president of Capitol Records, didn't want the Butcher cover released. And John Lennon told Brian Epstein it had to be released or the Capitol Records wasn't going to be able to release any more Beatle albums. So John Lennon put the pressure on him. So Alan Livingston okayed it. They made 750,000 butcher covers, but they destroyed almost 700,000 of them in the re recall. So there's approximately 50 to 60,000 of them that got pasted over. That is sad. My nose stained. Who's better, me or the Beatles? This was my big sale today. My Beatles lunchbox that you've seen on a few of my streams sold it for eleven $1 hundred and fifty dollars today. It's in almost excellent condition. It has some wear on the edges, but 
it's pretty nice. The face plates look good and the uh, rims there on the side are in good shape. And the thermos is in good shape with unbroken glass bottle. So the why this lunchbox is the most valuable lunchbox of all lunchboxes is because beetle collectors want it and lunchbox collectors want it. And when that happens, it just drives the price up. They or both want it. Or the American. Oh, that's a story that somebody messaged me today about my first state butcher cover. They can't believe I haven't sold it at $19,000 yet because it's so rare. There's only 50 to 100 of them left in the world. Mine's in, in near mint condition. And he uh, said uh, the butcher covers is kind of like Bitcoin. It's just a pretty safe bet that it's going to go up in value. So I thought that was pretty interesting. What, what do you need? What you need, sick kid? It doesn't look like a lunchbag. That's what they used to look like a lunchbag. Not that. That one. That, that. See, this is... Not that. That's the thermos. That. That's a, this thermos would have been inside here when you took it, and you would kept your liquid for the day so you could drink it out of there. Over here. Look, see, there's a cap. God bless you. Excuse me. Hey, All right. Read that before he moves on to the last one. KRWD said those thermal glass liners were no, 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 notorious. Notorious, notorious for, for, for breaking for my brother, and I broke several. Yeah, the, it's got like a glass aluminum bottle uh, inside. I'm sure most of them got cracked over time. All right, another thing I sold today on my Sticker Mania 2853 eBay store. I sold the Notorious Date Book Magazine with all the controversy from John Lennon and a little bit from Paul McCartney. Sold for $100 today. I only owned it a few days. It's in nice condition. Speaking about magazines, rare magazines with the Beatles. Concerning the Beatles, these are two. This magazine only lasted about six issues in 1968. And this is the rarest of all of them. With John Lennon on the cover. There's a whole, um, has a, all the interview of John Lennon and Paul McCartney when they went to um, New York to promote Apple Records. About the last time Paul and John got together, or got along for that long. I think there were three days in New York. And they went on the Johnny Carson show, and John Lennon, as soon as they sat down, they said, well, where's Johnny? They said, oh, Johnny's, uh, he takes uh, Wednesdays off. So they had Joe Gazzaroli, if I'm not saying his, butchering his name, a baseball player, and he was the uh, guest host that day, and he didn't know much about the Beatles, so it was an awkward, awkward interview. So this got the Bob Dylan poster still attached inside, so it's in near mint condition, real nice spine, nowhere to the cover. And then this is the other rare one, I magazine from August of 1968, and it has the yellow submarine poster still attached inside. That's what it looks like there. That's half of it. I can't unfold it because it's attached to the middle of the magazine. Two rare mag magazines from 1968. All right, talk about, see my new uh, backdrop here. This is a 36 by 24, I've been talking about this. Ooh. 3D cover, 
to promote the Sgt. Pepper on the 20th anniversary in Canada. You got the drum all the way out, and then you got the Beatles there in the middle. That's the second uh, section. And it even has black, like, shadows of the Beatles on behind it, and black on from the side there of the ferns. You can see the shadows on that back. So that's really nice the way they created that. Never, if you Google this, you can't even find it. That's a pretty rare piece. Promote the Sgt. Pepper, the Great Beatles album, in 1987, the 20th anniversary. KRWD said they have got to be ultra rare. I've never heard of that magazine. The Eye Magazine. Eye Magazine, yeah. Have you ever had a Beatles skateboard? I've never had a Beatles skateboard. One of the rarest Beatles memorabilia. I think it's in my book. It's one of the rarest things. That's good. She's laughing. So this is from August. Two months in a row. They were both concerning the Beatles. 1968. Yellow Submarine and Paul and John going to New York to promote Apple Records. When Apple Records was still fresh before they started having problems where they were getting ripped off left and right. All right, let's talk about hype stickers. Alan Klein was, became their manager when Apple Records was a mess, their Apple headquarters. And in 1970, he created the Hey Jude album to get a lot of uh, some money, some extra money for the Beatles at Hey Jude Revolution, because Hey Jude had never been released on an album. This is after the Beatles broke up, but they got some hefty bonus checks due to this album. But what makes this one nice, it's got the rare small hype sticker for Hey Jude affixed to the cover. Usually you got a Hey Jude all the way across, but it's real hard to find the small hype sticker. If you notice Paul's pants, aren't tinted in the first issues where they say Beatles again on the label. That was a mistake. It should have said the Beatles Hey Jude. But the very first pressing said Beatles again. But on the second pressings, when they corrected it to Hey Jude, Paul wanted his pants tinted so he would stand out on the cover. So, but this is the first issue where he just kind of cam is camouflaged in the cover, but on the, I don't have a later issue right now where I can show how his pants are tinted. Paul usually got his way. <laughs> he wanted something done. All right, you got any comments there? You guys are, are secretly <laughs> whispering. She was about to flip me off. No. Everyone like and subscribe and hit the notification link. Yeah, put, put some likes in there. That will help. We're at uh, 1,320 subscribers now and our watch time's moving up. I okay. think we're at 1,600 watch time hours. We got to get to 3,000. The more the likes, the closer we do another trivia. Oh, another giveaway? Yep. Yeah, hopefully I get... Uh, I do two good butcher covers, I don't have to give one of them away. <laughs> Alright, uh, another one with a hype sticker. This is a factory sale. 1973 first press on Apple Records, a band on the run. And Kevin, my um, buddy here in Louisville, said if he, I had an open copy of this, it wouldn't be worth more than $20, but to have a factory sealed first press, a band on the run with a hype sticker, I'd say that's pretty rare. It's up for sale on my eBay store at $255. You can see the big factory breathe holes in there, in the factory shrink there on the front. Four square corners, no, no breaks in the shrink. Mm -hmm. You ever had this? What is it? It's a Kabuto kit in his Yeah, he's had that before. It's so cute. I've had it a couple times. 
Alright, one thing I forgot to talk about in our last live stream, I had all my notes. I've had a several, give me that BC-13 behind you again. Thank you. So, buyers and sellers of the BC-13 get totally confused by discogs when they look up the matrices on the pressings. Because on Discogs, they pretty much list all the 1978 through 1985 as the same pressing. But there are ways to tell the difference, but Discogs doesn't go into it. But the one thing I have to always tell people is they got to look at that white inner sleeve to see that they never know what this means, this little date here. It just says 181 until the normal person that collects and albums and stuff, they have no idea what that means. But it means in England, that's the way they date things, pressing. It means June of 1981. Or if it said 02-81, it'd be February of 81. So they... Tom Port uh, pretty much taught me that the best uh, UK pressings are the Harry T. Moss, and they got to be the 78 to the uh, 81 uh, dated pressings. And you can see how many HTM, which stands for Harry T. Moss, you can see he recut all these albums, everything but Please Please Me with the Beatles and Hard Day's Night. He recut every other album and added more bass. And in Tom Port's opinion, they're all audiophile pressings better than the original tube cut from the uh, 1960s. And even George Borden's starting to notice that too. Even though they're solid state pressings, he says there's more detail and there's just clarity in the uh, mixes on these Harry, Harry T. Moss from the uh, late 1970s. No, Ms. Nick said, thanks so much, Frank. Too rich for me, but somebody will buy it. BC-13, that's what I'm talking about, exclamation point. Huh, well, you know, Ms. Nick, you gotta get a BC-13. <laughs> I do have a Dutch BC-13 up on my eBay store at $700. It's in my bank vault, but it has the best audiophile pressing of the white album that exists in the world, according to Andrew from Polygram Auctions. I got a million in my bank vault. All right, here's another audiophile box set I got in. What you doing, sir? Kid, you gonna put a hat on? Rolling Stones hat. Way to go! You're Rolling Stones and Beatles. Or I'm Led Zeppelin <laughs> and the Beatles. He hit foot. Holy cow, Batman! <laughs> Gee whiz, Batman! This is why I don't like the <laughs> <laughs> There's supposed to be 50 quotes that Robin used on Batman. I'm gonna have to learn them all. I'm so tired. Girl, bye. No. Yeah, could you go out there and play tablet for two hours, anyway, so don't tell me to talk. Alright, this is a 1980. <laughs> The Rolling Stone story from Germany. Germany. It's got 10, 12 albums. Everything from the Rolling Stones to Metamorphosis. But it has stereo pressings of Let It Bleed and Beggar's Banquet. I heard the Beggar's Banquet yesterday. Give me shelter really sounds good on this pressing. Near mint condition of the Rolling Stones story from Germany. Germany sure knew how to make audiophile pressings around 1980. Duh. They had the cutting lathes, they had the equipment, and they went after the master tapes, and they sure made audiophile pressings of the Beatles, Rolling Stones. And they made some of Led Zeppelin in the 70s, too. All right, any other questions you guys want to ask about before I get keep going, going? What, what did you this? do? What's the other rest of the string goes? 
What did you do? <laughs> All right, got this in today. A 1973 jukebox. Original jukebox from Led Zeppelin, Houses of the Holy. It has Dancing Days, Do Your Maker. I'm not, I'm like Mazzy, I can't say that real good, but I think it's Do Your Maker. What? The song remains the same and the crunch. Produced by Atlantic Re Records, especially for Little LPs Unlimited in Connecticut. What do you think is wrong? It's got a whole strip, unused strip, jukebox strip for Led Zeppelin, Houses of the Holy. And the record's in great shape. I play today, it plays at 33 and a third. Really sounds good. Is there a movie on them? Lots of movies on that stuff. No, on the Beatles. Well, they're going to make four movies in the next uh, year from each point, uh, each uh, solo Beatles point of view. All right, we got another 1973 jukebox. Um, it, that one has a soft cover, paper cover, and this one has a cardboard cover. Goathead Soup, the Rolling Stones. And there's the jukebox strips for that. So those two jukebox records from 1973. Daniel Castillo asked, have you heard about the Medios, Medios main biopic? Yes. He's talking about the Beatles biopics they're going to make. Is that what he's talking about? There's four of them? Oh, I think so. I think so. I think so. The latest rumor is going around that they're going to do a, uh, a remaster of Please Please Me this year, the early albums, but I don't know if it's true or not. Oh, no. All right, we also have promo 7-inch of Jumpin' Jack Flash. Sorry about that, stupid kid. This is a biopic about Brian Epstein. Oh, yeah, the manager. Yeah, that's coming. That might already be out. I'm not sure. They've been working on it. So that's a David Bailey uh, photos of the Rolling Stones, the front and back of them. Look how Brian Jones has got that. Uh, Try that type of thing. Was that like a devil thing? Yeah, devils. Yeah. That's about shortly before Brian Jones uh, got fired from the band. But it's got a promo record, that orange label of Jumpin' Jack Flash. And Child on the Moon. And you remember my story I told you about how the premier party they had for Jumpin' Jack Flash, Paul McCartney attended and had to acetate for Hey Jude. And all the audience kept wanting to hear is them to play the acetate over and over again. Needless to say, um, Mick Jagger was an unhappy camper. <laughs> That's funny. Mick Jagger sucks. You know, him and Paul have the same ego. So, like, when they put two people with high egos together, they're yeah. good. <laughs> if you had the three biggest egos all in one place, you would have Mick Jagger in the same room, you'd have Paul McCartney in the same room, My and you'd checks. have this man in the middle in the same room. Who is he? Jimmy Page. That psychopath. Jimmy Page has said that nobody's going to remix or remaster the Led Zeppelin albums as long as he's alive. I did. You want to talk about your turquoise one? Um, no. No. Okay. I didn't know if you were going to mention that was going on. No. Before I told you where it's coming from. It's questionable. It's ever going to happen. 
I do have a Led Zeppelin II in near mint condition uh, RL hot mix coming the beginning of the week. Trivia question is how much did I spend close to on a near mint Led Zeppelin II that was in a record company representative and he had a bunch of albums that were all climate controlled in a storage unit and he passed away and somebody got a hold of his estate and in the middle was a near mint RL Led Zeppelin II hot mix. How much did I pay for that a few days ago? Anybody want to take it, um, a guess? $10. A lot more than $10. A thousand. More than a thousand. Ten thousand. I actually no. have. No, some. it's Nick. Just made a guess. Oh, uh, three hundred. Huh? Three hundred. Three hundred. Yes. No, nineteen hundred dollars. Oh my God! Oh, I was close. Close. Thank you. You, were the you win. You were close, and you weren't over. What do you win? Not Jack. A uh, question. You want to? I know what you win. You get to peel my next butcher cover. No, I get to leave. <laughs> it's like. Excuse me. Okay. Lloyd Reed said the British have no business playing rock and roll. No, who doesn't? The British. Lou the British Reed said that. The British have no. Uh, that's <laughs> where all the famous uh, bands came from. Was from England. Daniel Castillo said he was never a fan of the British invasion. Well, the British invasion? Oh, it just took over. You had the uh, Kinks, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, Jerry and the Pacemakers, the Hollies. Dave Clark 5, um, you could go on and on and on. Nib is Nick, you actually missed 1,600, but it's okay. You missed by guessing 300? He said, he he said missed I missed by 1,000. Uh, oh, he guessed 300. Yeah, he yeah. said I missed by 1,300, but I said actually. Oh, he said 1,300? No, he said 300, and oh. he just said I yeah. missed the 1,000, oh. 1,300. How, how could you get a near mint, uh, hardly played uh, Led Zeppelin two for $300? I'd like to know where <laughs> you'd get that at. Daniel Castillo said, he said, well, he said, he said, well, he said, the Brits took the sex out of rock and roll. Took the sex out of rock and roll? Bye, Steve. All right, you got this uh, Led Zeppelin book that was only available on the 1968 tour of the United States. It's a hardback book. I got a couple of these. I got one up for sale on my eBay store, and it's pretty nice. It's made by the Visual Thing Incorporated. Out of uh, California, Beverly Hills, in 1969. He's got great shots of the early Led Zeppelin. I think it's just bizarre how the front picture, Jimmy makes sure he's up front. And then right here is another shot from the same um, session. Of course, Jimmy's right up front on that one, too. <laughs> See, can, can you do any voices like she does? You got any impressions to do for us? <laughs> no. so you see my McCartney 2022 7-inch box set. Thought I'd show it one more time before I put it put it away. Never been opened yet, and the number is 432 out of 3,000. Everyone had a different test pressing. So I have no idea what song the test pressing is on this one. Novus Nick said the iPad didn't print the one in front of the 300. Guess. So he guessed, he so he guessed 1300. You're getting, you're getting in the right ballpark. Daniel Castillo said Brian Wilson and I want to hold your hand wasn't even a good record. Brian Wilson said I want to hold your hand wasn't a good record? Yeah. Wow. I want to hold your hand every time I hear it. Heard it a thousand times. It makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. What an amazing song. She Loves You, I Want to Hold Your Hand. What a start in the, in the USA. They was playing that one song at the store. I like that one. I Want to Hold Your Hand had already sold close to 3 million copies the first week the Beatles were in America. In New York City, I think they were selling, they probably sold a million out of those three million in New York City alone. 
they would bring out boxes, full boxes, I want to hold your hand. And as fast as the guy that was the record store owner, he had a beetle wigs on, as fast as he could open the box and take the money, that's how fast they were selling. There's video of it that proves that. Daniel Castillo said, well, rock was in decline because a lot of the pioneers were out of the industry. Because of what? A lot of the pioneers were out of the industry. Yes. And we got uh, Brian Wilson was probably under the, the influence when, when he said about that. that. Yeah, he might have been. Why are you reading the comments? <laughs> All right, well, I'll quit doing it. But you're putting a dialect to it. She's I can't trying to it. be... Trying to put an English accent? Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's how I talk. I'm giving her credit for it. Daniel Castillo said they, they really benefited from the state of the industry. Yeah, really what? Benefited. Benefited. The English? I don't know. Maybe. This is another time the Butcher Cover Slick was released in 1986 for the 20th anniversary of Paperback, Writer, and Rain. Do you notice how it looks a little different than the Butcher Cover? All right, uh, let's look at these questions. I don't want to get too far behind. I want to answer. Maybe alone. Huh. No, nah, man, I think we... Uh, got... Nevis Nick said English gal sitting there. Lol. Oh, I'm talking about you. English. Yeah, we're caught up. We're caught up on everything. All right, White Album. This is a White Album 1980 pressing out of the BC-13. I just put it up today for $122. And it has, uh, where's my BC-13 sheet? I must have put it in that box. The White Album has an HTM on side one minus three htm so the only the only side that harry t moss thought it needed to recut was side one on the white album in night in the late 1970s harry moss was did the original most of all of them except abbey road in the original 60s and then in the uh late 70s he went in and used the master tapes and he recut them because he knew Stereo equipment could handle the uh, more bass and more highs than it could back in the 60s. So he recut all the later Beatle albums. Daniel Castillo said they started making better music when Bob Dylan offered them pots. Yeah, uh, that was uh, when they were on tour in late 1964 in August. They were in New York City at the Delmonico and a Hotel, and they had a uh, late rendezvous meeting with Bob Dylan. And Bob Dylan thought, I want to hold your hand, was in the middle. He thought they were saying, uh, I get high, I get high. But they were really saying, I can't hide, I can't hide. Oh. So he thought that I want to hold your hand was about smoking pot, but it wasn't. But I want to hold your hand was about uh, sex. Well, huh? it's more than just I want to hold your hand. Do the uh, Wolfie and then do the Brad. Do the Wolfie and the Brad. Oh, give me my book. Oh. Wolfie Baby's Life and Love and Records. Say, we'll say, Wolfie, say, hi, how you doing, Wolfie Baby? What's he saying? No, my dad's being rude. Nova's Nick and I care WD. Hi, Grace Dream. You're just saying Grace Dream. All right. Way to go, Wolfie. All right. Keep Brad Barnell said my friend just saw Bob Dylan the other night. Yeah, uh, Kevin from Kevin Records went and saw Bob Dylan here in Louisville also. And he had real good seats. And he said he was over on the side. And I hate to bust uh, everybody's bubble, but they closed the curtains because they had to help. Uh, Bob off of the uh, stage. Care so Bob is getting on in his years. KRWD said, hello, Dylan was under the influence when he heard that record. 
When he heard, uh, I want to hold your hand. Yeah. All right, what we talk about, what have I had not talk about? German Magical Mystery Tour. Oh my God. Daniel Castillo said a lot of these artists had these things in a PBS documentary. This is a 1981 Magical Mystery Tour with a true stereo mix from Germany. And this is a DMM cut. Direct metal, metal mastering. And the uh, lacquers were made out of copper. It says plus C in the dead wax. And I listened to this yesterday, and it's as good as the um, 1973 Horzu. The DMM cut of Magical Mystery Tour. If you have a serious Beatles collection, you must have the German Magical Mystery Tour. You're really missing out. My buddy said he played the uh, Kevin at a... At a um, a couple nights ago, he played the Magical Mystery Tour from the United States. He said it had no low end at all from uh, the 60s. This, this pressing has everything. How you doing, sticker kid? I'm tired. You're tired? Wow, well, calm down. It's 11.50. We got like 10 minutes left. 10 more minutes! And we'll I be done. I can't wait. Yeah, you can. Rolling Stones. I don't think we talked too much. We just talked about that jukebox. This is a 1971 first press of Sticky Fingers. And it's got the hype sticker. They, they, the original owner took the hype sticker off the shrink and he glued it to the back of the cover. But on this one, usually you can't... You can't see what's in the middle, but this one opens up. And no, that is not Mick Jagger in the underwear. That's a young uh, porn star from the late 60s. I hate to yeah. start any controversy. Ew. Ew. Stating facts. Just stating facts. Ew. I guess I gotta watch what I say. I got kids in the audience, or kids in attendance. Yeah, him, I'm not. So this is a Monarch MO pressing, if you can see that, MO on the uh, label. And that's the uh, best pressing from the United States you can get of Sticky Fingers. Not as good as the TML from Germany and the United Kingdom, but this will be the third best audiophile pressing of Sticky Fingers that exists in the world. Made from the freshly just done master tapes. All those sticky fingers pressings that are done from the last 20 years, they're not made from the original analog master tapes where these pressings were. KRW said Mick wishes that was him in the picture. Huh, Mick wishes that was him in the picture? <laughs> the, zip, the zipper's in perfect shape. And it's got the usual uh, little nicks from the the zipper when it was in the shipping box. But that's kind of neat. They, they unglued that one there. That's the Andy Warhol print there in the middle. It says Andy Warhol. Any album cover that has an Andy Warhol uh, print is worth money. There's a lot of them from the 50s and 60s that Andy Warhol did the cover for. Who in the heck is Andy Warhol? Well, that's before your time. When I was dead? No, just before your time. Yeah, so when I was dead. Probably. This is my sealed Abbey Road, uh, first issue, 1987, in the long box. Um, Kimbo bought my other two that were made in West Germany. I think it was Sgt. Pepper and Rubber Soul. I told him that Sergeant Pepper is an audiophile CD. I said, he should never get rid of that. He says he's going to hold on to it. All right, let's round this out. We got any questions? I've shown about most everything. Purchase you history. Show me the love stuff. Or you no, I showed that. I showed that last time. I got a question. 
Easter. How do I feel about Easter? Yes. You tell us how you feel about Easter. Um, nothing. Nothing? Brad explained what he, who he is. And Brad Parnell said, oh, Andy Warhol was an American visual artist, film director, producer, and leading figure in the pop art movement. Yeah, he's in, um... Someone explained it at least. Thanks. I'm pretty sure he's in one of these eye magazines. See if I can find a picture of Andy Warhol. Uh, that, uh... Oh, that, uh... thought they had some artists in here. So you can talk like that to be more clear. You're gonna have to practice it when you can identify what's clear. I can. Uh, make sure you do it right. I mean, well, I don't mind you doing that, but you just gotta clear it. Uh, better. She's cute. I'll show it next time when I find it. But Andy Warhol is in one of these eye magazines. All right, purchase history. Today on eBay, they had a stereo introducing the Beatles version 2 in the shrink with a stereo red st sticker on the front cover and stereo at the 12 o'clock position on the label. It was sitting at uh, $444 with five minutes to go. I bid $555 and won at the last second. Won it for $537. The last uh, stereo introducing the Beatles version two I had uh, sold yesterday for $888. To find an authentic stereo introducing the Beatles is really, really tough. And to find them in that, these excellent condition is pretty impossible. I have two West Coast peeled third state butcher covers coming in, in the next few days. Uh, one uh, cost me $1,900 and the other one cost me $1,250. The reason I'm buying these is the West Coast butcher covers are tough to peel. And I figure you can't go wrong getting real nice peeled West Coast butcher covers done by Jim Hansen, which I think is retired. And if he really is retired, there aren't going to be too many more uh, peeled West Coast butcher covers because he's about the only one I know that can really do a good job. He gets that trunk slick off. And he does a great peel. They were really, I've tried about 10 of them. They're really tough to peel a West Coast with that strong alcohol based glue. Or the East Coast have a water based glue that I can steam peel and get that trunk slick off. And then I, then I get the rest of the paper and glue off with steam, but you can't do that on the West Coast. What else I got coming on, Butcher? Uh, I, told, I have a sealed Magical Mystery Tour of Germany from uh, the late, might be uh, late 77 or 81, like this one. Perry Cox put a sealed one up and went off yesterday, and I won it for $192 at the last second. And 22 cents. And I have, a, I told you on the last stream that I have a Dub Beatles coming from Germany, the best pressing of uh, Please Please Me coming that a, a bookstore put a real nice one up for $80 and I bought it right away. So that's my purchase history. I told you about my 3D great cover here. We'll leave that on the background for a week or two before I put that up for sale. Somebody asked me on my uh, live stream teaser I put up today short, is this stuff for sale uh, that you're showing? I said, yeah, we'll be in the next couple days. I All right. I think the kids are getting tired. I think uh, they're looking forward to the Easter egg hunt tomorrow, and we'll wrap this up. It's been a barn burner, and what, what did I say? Holy cow, Batman. Check out this next Wednesday and next Saturday we'll, we'll do the same bat time, same bat channel. We'll do another live stream with new vintage music memorabilia from the Beatles and Led Zeppelin and 
Stones. Rolling Stones. Rolling you got Stones. it. You got it. Way to go, Sticker Kid. Oh, you man. came through. All right. Thanks a lot for checking us out. See you later. Have a nice day.